Hola a todos, in this video I am going to be going through the different characters in La Casa de Bernarda Alba. If you are studying this text as part of your A level, then I hope you will find this video super useful. The page numbers for the quotations come from this cover of the book. First up, we have the character of Bernarda. The play is named after her, and she is the protagonist of the play. Her first name means with the strength of her bear, and her surname Alba means dawn and refers to whiteness and it can be associated with purity or chastity. Her name is more commonly a man's name in the form of Bernardo. She has five daughters and is 60 years old. She uses El Baston, her walking stick for violence. She hits her daughters with the stick, and in the stage directions, it often says she's beating the floor with the stick. This is a stage direction, which you can quote in an essay, demonstrating her authority and violence. She is obsessed with her and her family's reputation and what others think of her, like her neighbours. She wants to maintain a facade in front of the neighbours, and this is why she locks her mother in the house, so that others don't see that she is crazy. A good quote here is El Que Diran, meaning what others will say. Bernada's first and last words in the play are Thilanthio, showing that she is quick to assert her dominance over the lower class servants and the rest of her family. She comes across as powerful. The fact that it is her final word of the play, as well as her first, shows that nothing has changed throughout the duration of the play. Despite Adela taking her own life, Bernada's authoritative behaviour has not changed. In Act 1, Bernada tells the servant, Less talk and more work, the poor are like animals. This shows Bernada's obsession with being higher in the social hierarchy by treating her servants badly. In regards to her relationship with the other characters, she does not get on at all with her daughters as they do not accept Bernardo's rules and traditions. She also undervalues La Pontia, as she belongs to a lower social class than her. Other important things are she has married twice, once with her first husband, who is unnamed, but the father of Angustias, and secondly with Antonio Maria Benavides, the father of her other four children. In Act 1, it is mentioned by La Pontia that the family of Antonio hate Bernarda. The play begins with the family coming back from Antonio's funeral, Bernarda is therefore a widow. In Act 3, when Angustias shares her concerns about Pepe el Romano, Bernarda's advice, Habla si el habla, y míralo cuando te mire, demonstrates the importance of traditions to Bernarda and the old features of a marriage where the woman has no freedom. At the end of the play, after Adela takes her own life, Bernarda shouts, Mi hija ha muerto virgen, showing the importance of reputation and virginity to Bernarda. Next up is La Poncia, who is the housekeeper and Bernarda's confidant. She acts as a bridge between Bernarda and her daughters, and she knows Bernarda's daughters better than Bernarda knows them. Her name means swollen ankle and also refers to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor who washed his hands as a symbolic gesture, indicating his refusal to take the blame for Jesus' death. La Poncia in the play also washes her hands of the drama with the daughters. Her children work on Bernarda's lands, so she feels indebted to her. She is two-faced, acting the part of the faithful servant when she is in Bernarda's company, but declaring a hatred of her behind her back. In Act 1, Bernarda tells Poncia, Me serves y te pago nada más, in an attempt to keep her quiet and remind her of her place. This shows their very bitter relationship. Despite La Poncia having served Bernarda for 30 years, they have no love for each other, and she describes her as a bossy, domineering creature. At the start of the play, she calls herself Una Buena Perra. Dogs are known for their loyalty, however, she criticises Bernarda often behind her back, most notably at the start of the play with the Criad. In Act 3, La Poncia says, Pues, hay una tormenta en cada cuarto, meaning, there is a storm in every room of the house. Here, Poncia tries, is trying to warn Bernarda about Adela's actions, which she cannot see due to her metaphorical blindness. Now, moving on to Bernarda's daughters. First up is Adela. Her name is from the Spanish verb adelantar, which means to go forward or overtake. Adela is a character of great vitality, who will not compromise her principles in the face of the tyranny of her mother. It is also said that her name implies nobility in German. Adela is the youngest of the sisters, aged 20, and the most beautiful. She does not share the negative attitude of her sisters about her destiny. She wants to be happy and leave her house freely. In Act 1, the suffocating heat prompts Bernarda to ask for a fan. Adela hands her one decorated with red and green flowers, which Bernarda immediately hurls to the ground, as she says it is inappropriate to give to a widow. Also in Act 1, on page 38, she says in a small monologue, 
Yo no quiero estar encerrada. Mañana me pongo en mi vestido verde y me echaré a pasear por la calle. Yo quiero salir. Adela is the only one of Bernardo's daughters who refuses to respect the morning. The idea of wearing a green dress is a clear gesture of rebellion, as the color green sim symbolizes vitality and sexual desire. On a similar vein, in Act 2, she says, Yo hago con mi cuerpo lo que me parece. She is again expressing her desire for freedom. Later on during the same conversation, she says, Mi cuerpo será de quien yo quería, highlighting her sexual desires too. Furthermore, Adela is the only daughter to confront the authority of her mother, and this is shown when she breaks the, her mother's stick, which, which was the main symbol of tyranny in the house. This stage direction says, Adela snatches a stick from her mother and parts it in two. We can assume that Adela is pregnant from her reaction when Bernarda and Prudencia talk about the daughter of the dead body, and Adela shouts, No, no, para matarla, no! She has a secret affair with Pepe el Romano until Martirio catches her, and their argument causes the affair to be discovered. She hangs herself at the end of the play. Another one of Bernarda's daughters is Angustias. Angustias is 39 years old, and the oldest daughter of Bernarda. She is also the only daughter from Bernarda's first husband. Her name comes from Angustia, meaning anguish. Anguish is defined as severe mental or physical pain or suffering. This character is not happy with what she has. Her name also symbolizes her age, ugliness, and desire to marry. She has inherited the fortune of her father, and therefore she has a lot of money, a lot more than her sisters. This is why Pepe el Romano wants to marry her. Angustias is such a sickly character that La Poncia suggests that she will die after bearing her first child. According to her sisters, she is also the least attractive. She is the most influenced by Bernarda. Her sisters are all jealous of her, mostly because she is going to marry the most beautiful man of the village, and she will be the first sister to escape the house. In Act 3, she shares her doubts about Pepe with her mother. She says, Yo lo encuentro distraído and yo creo, madre, que él me oculta muchas cosas. These quotes show that in reality, Angustias does not want to get married to Pepe, but she understands that it is the only way of escaping the house. In Act 2, La Poncia describes her as now a wasted old and going to die. The second youngest of Bernarda's daughters, aged 24, is Maltirio. Her name implies a person who suffers. She is a twisted character, pessimistic and full of spite. Like Adela, she has also fallen in love with Pepe el Romano and steals Angustias' photo of him. Maltirio is the ugliest of the sisters as she has a physical deformity, she is hunchback. But despite this, she had a lover, Enrique Humanes. However, he was considered an unsuitable husband by Malti for Maltirio by Bernarda because his father was a farm laborer. Maltirio's importance in the plot increases as the tension rises. In Act 2, Maltirio describes the summer as never-ending. This highlights one of the main themes, the theme of heat, that suppresses and suffocates the sexual desires of the daughters. In Act 3, Maltirio says, I have a heart full of such a bad force that, without wanting it myself, I drown myself. In this quote, Maltirio confesses that she has an evil force in her, and that it is drowning her like it drowns Adela. The next two daughters are more or less secondary characters. Magdalena's name is from the Spanish idiom llorar como una Magdalena, which means to weep like Magdalene, from the biblical story of Mary Magdalene who weeps at Jesus' feet. Magdalena is the second oldest sister, aged 30, and Amelia is 27. They are both the middle-aged sisters. Amelia has a shy and caring personality and is the least talkative one. They both share the negative attitude of the other sisters. In Act 1, Magdalena accepts that she will never get married, saying, Sé que yo no me voy a casar. Magdalena is a sister that most accepts the tyrannical rule that Bernarda exercises over the household. She also shows a lot of sympathy for others. She weeps at the death of her father and shows some affection towards Adela. In the same conversation, she says, Women are cursed, portraying the fact that being a woman in, in itself is considered a negative in life. Amelia conveys a similar message in Act 2 when she says, Nacer mujer es el mayor castigo. She believes there is no worse punishment than being born a woman. Bernarda tells Magdalena to stop crying, showing that Magdalena is the most affected by the death of her father, as she is the only one visibly crying. It also shows 
that Bernatha does not want her daughters to show any weakness. Towards the end of Act 1, Magdalena says, Pero nos pudrimos por el que dirán, meaning, but reward from what they say, which shows that village gossip can destroy a family's reputation. This is what Bernada is scared of. Amelia is Maldirio's closest confidant, and Maldirio nearly tells her of her suspicions about why Adela is always tired during the day when Amelia is about to leave the station at two. Moving away from the daughters, another influential character is Pepe el Romano. Pepe el Romano never appears on stage because the action takes place entirely in Bernada's house, a space which men are strictly prohibited from entering. But Pepe is omnipresent in the minds of the daughters. His influence on the plot is fundamental. Pepe is the most eligible man locally and is acceptable to Bernada as a husband for Angustias. He is the most beautiful man in the town. He is 25 years old, much younger than Angustias, who is 39. He is flirting with two of the daughters, Angustias for her money and Adela because she is the youngest and prettiest. Maldirio is also secretly in love with him. Therefore, he is seducing three of Bernada's daughters at once. We can assume that he comes from a suitable class family, as Bernada allows his relationship with Angustias, unlike Maldirio with Enrique Romanos. We can infer that he is greedy as he wants Angustias for her money, despite finding Adela more attractive. In Act 1, Magdalena explains that Pepe clearly only wants Angustias for her money, and that she'd rather he want her for her looks. She also describes Pepe as el mejor tipo de todos estos contornos, meaning he's the best looking man for miles around. Those are all the main characters in the play. The last three have less significance, yet can still be mentioned in your essays, and are useful to understand if you want to aim for the highest grades. However, you most likely won't be asked a question solely on these characters. Prudencia is the neighbour that comes to visit Bernada. Her name means prudent and sensible. She is controlled by her husband and complies with what is socially acceptable, but is unhappy about it. Maria Josefa is Bernada's mother and 80 years old. She suffers from dementia, hence Bernada keeps her locked up away out of sight from her neighbours to uphold the family reputation. Her name comes from the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. She echoes her granddaughter's longing for marriage and children. In Act 3 she sings, Little Lamb, Little Lamb, My Child. This demonstrates her delusion and lust to have a baby of her own, but she has been knocked away by Bernada. She has no affection or significant relationship for any other characters. We can assume she imposed the same tyranny on Bernada when her father died as Bernada imposes on her daughters. In Act 1, Bernada tells the Criada to keep Maria Josefa away from the well so that the neighbours don't see her. This reinforces Bernada's obsession with reputation and presents Maria Josefa as someone who can easily ruin Bernada's reputation if she's not kept locked. Finally, we have the Criada. She is a servant of less status than La Pompia. It is inferred that she had an affair with Bernada's dead husband, Antonia Maria Benavides. Also, she, so she shows no mercy to the beggar woman that appears in Act 1 and treats her just as she would be treated by Bernada. This shows the effect of mistreatment in a hierarchy, as Bernada's mistreatment of La Pompia is replicated by La Pompia to the Criada, who replicates it to the, to the beggar woman. This, that is a detailed analysis of the 11 most important characters. I really hope you found this video useful.